Ma. Oh, are you going to introduce anything now? Oh, I mean, I can. Do you want me to? Why not? <laughs> <laughs> and it, introduce you or introduce me? Wait, what? No, just, yeah, the show, yeah. Syncretism, <laughs> Geocentrism and Astrology. Yeah, hey everybody, thanks for joining. So, um, yeah, we have Santos Benacci with us and our Syncretism Face Group, Face Flat Earth Group Friends joining also. So, um, yeah, take it away, Santos. Thank you. Thanks, guys, for joining and uh, great support last week, great feedback, and this is a continuation of last week's show. So this is part two, or really part three. This is the third of this um, group's syncretism, geocentrism, astrology meeting. Why are we having these meetings? Well, to correct all of the erroneous everything, everything, all the pseudoscience, we're going to bring it into the realm of transcendental science, which is syncretism, geocentrism, and astrology. Astrology is the word of God. Astrology is the true transcendental science. Astronomy is the science of pseudoscience. You see, ever since Aristotle, they want us to divert our attention from the astrological transcendental wisdom and become mere mundane materialist speculators dealing with astronomy. Astronomy is for buffoons, just as the trivium is for buffoons. These logicians who think that logic and reason is going to save the day. This has nothing to do with transcendental science. They will never, ever, ever come to an accurate knowledge of truth because they are trivium heads. This is materialist science. It is not spiritual science, folks. Big difference. Major big difference. So we are here to correct everything. Everything is going to be corrected here in this group. This is a very special group, folks. So I thank you for joining me. And, um, and what you're going to learn here is you're going to expand your consciousness on the true transcendental science. Here we will be expounding on the Holy Scriptures, the Bible, the Quran, the uh, Vedas, and all of the great literature. Here is where you will correct all of the, the erroneous buffoonery going on in the world. Um, you idiots like Mike, uh, Mark Dice, who I've um, um, nicknamed Mark Dunce. I did that uh, years ago. He's a dunce. He's a pure shill. He is a demon-worshipping uh, swine eater, and he is a paid shill by NASA and by all the demons to teach pseudoscience. He's now going out against B.O.B., uh, saying, you know, that he's uh, wrong about the uh, flat disc plane that we live on. Well, Mark Dice, don't you forget my name. I'm Santos Bonacci. I'm going to make you, I'll put your book, your name in the book of shame for the rest of history, and people will be throwing rotten eggs at your posters because you are a shill and a swine eater and a liar. What are you, Mark Dunst? You're a liar. And uh, Neil uh, D Disgrace Tyson, you will go down in history as a shameful imbecile. An imbecile, a traitor to your people, a traitor to true science. You are an idiot. You are a meat-eating, flesh-eating demon worshipper. I'm calling you all out, all of you. And Richard Dawkins, I've given him a nickname, Dick Dork. Dick the Dork. He is nothing but a dork. He's an atheist pig. He's a swine eater. He's a useless eater. And he's a dunce. And I'm here to vanquish the demons together with you demon slayers. That's the only purpose we have here, folks. Vanqu vanquish the demons. Join me. This is how we do it. True science. True science. Okay? Transcendental science. To hell with the pseudoscience scientists. They are false prophets. We were warned in Matthew 24, 24, beware, for many false prophets will arise in that day and perform great signs and miracles. So if possible to mislead even the elect. Be warned, folks. There are a lot of deceivers out there. Mark Dunce, 
disgraced Tyson, Dick Dork. These are three idiots that I'm going to go after and shame them for the rest of eternity. They will never, ever be able to show their faces in public in the future. They will be living under, under, in caves under rocks like scorpions for the rest of eternity for the disgrace that they are to humanity, the lying thugs, demon worshippers. Thank you for appreciating my zeal for truth. Thank you very much. So last week we were talking about the golden ages and the silver ages, the bronze, the iron, and why is it that we are suffering? And why is it that we have great literature from antiquity which teaches geocentrism, the true science, and astrology, which is the true transcendental science, as opposed to astronomy, the science of buffoons, for buffoons, and for idiots. Well, this is why, and um, I'm going to be reading out of The Light of Egypt by Thomas H. Burgoyne, The uh, Science of the Soul and the Stars, the true science, astrology, astrologos, logos is the word of God, and astro, what's an astro? An astro is a light being. It's a being of light. And so these beings are angels. And when we speak astrologos, we become diviners, speaking about the divine. We become sorcerers, being connected to source. You see? Yes. Oh, I can hear the voices already. Oh, yes, but astrologers are condemned in the Bible. Oh, yes, they are, because they're idiots. Most of your astrologers are idiots. They don't know their science properly. And they do it for profit. And they do it for, for um, fortune telling and all sorts of idiotic things. That's not what science is for. It's the word of God. You see, Jesus condemned the lawyers. He did not condemn law. The Bible condemns astrology. It does not condemn astrology. It condemns astrologers. Astrology cannot be condemned because it's a language. How do you condemn Italian? I speak Italian, I don't believe in Italian. It's a language. I know it. I don't believe in English. I know it. I don't believe in astrology. I know it. It's a language. So excuse me for the emphasis. I probably, um, I don't know, maybe I had a good sleep last night and I've got extra energy so I'm <laughs> a little bit uh, extra zealous. I don't know but I don't really care because I'm not here for a personality contest. <laughs> I'm going to win the truth contest. That's the only contest I want to win. No personality, no that crap. That's for all the, the Mark Dunces and the Dick Dorks and the disgraced, debunked Tyson idiots, the false prophets. So guys, let us speak the truth from the rooftops. So on page um, 85 of this wonderful, wonderful tome, the first volume, there's two parts to this. I read from part two last week. This is what he says about the golden ages. Please pay attention, folks. This is how it all works. So, to this we reply, human suffering is the result of innumerable laws. So the question was asked, why human suffering? What's going on? Why is this, why are we so in, in, in such a mess and we are so... Um, unconscious and we see uh, so much evil, wars and trouble and strife and problems that seem insurmountable, etc. Well, this is the reason. So, to this we reply, human suffering is the result of innumerable laws which in their action and reaction produce discord at several intervals in the scale of human development. For all practical purposes, they may be classed under two general heads as primary and secondary. So we're going to have a look at the primary and secondary reasons as to why there is suffering. The primary cause is that of racial evolution. Each round and each race of the round requires different external conditions in order to evolve its chief attributes. For each round, and race becomes the special means by which a certain one of soul's attributes is rounded out, as it is termed. Let us illustrate. The first or primal race were those of the Golden Age. 
They were a pure, purely ethereal race of beings. I'm going to put me uh, $1 glasses on, guys, because I don't want to strain my eyes here. The writing is so small. That's better. They were a purely ethereal race of beings and cannot be strictly classified with what we know of humanity, nor can they be said to have been incarnated in gross matter at all. For this reason, their penetrative power was very small. Hence, though highly spiritual, they were correspondingly simple. They lived an ideal life amid semi-spiritual surroundings. The second race, that of silver, age, penetrated deeper into matter than their golden forefathers, and their bodies consequently became more dense. Pay attention. Toward the termination of this race and the beginning of the third or copper age, the equator of our racial arc was reached in the descending scale. Here it was that the first murmurings of a mental storm began to manifest themselves. Emigrations and partings took place between what had previously been a united people, and consequently separate national interests began to evolve. From the national was evolved that of the family. Kings ascended thrones and sacerdotal systems were formulated. Sacerdotal means priestly. The strong began to assert their greater force and the weak gradually sank into subjection. A still further descent and we came to the fourth race. Sorry, did I mention the copper race? Yeah. So that was the copper race um, where um, national and personal and family interests became prominent. Before that, no such thing happened. No immigration happened on the earth in the Silver Age. Everything was tranquil, tranquil and peaceful, etc. Uh, still a further descent and we came to the fourth race, the bottom rung in the cyclical ladder and fittingly known as the Iron Age. This was the turning point of the seven races, wherein the soul attains its greatest penetrating power. Spirit can descend no lower. Kings and their priestly counsellors became true despots, and the masses and helpless and depressed. Next comes a higher evolution, the fifth race, beginning at the end of the fourth, reaches up to the equinoctial line of the mental arc in the ascending scale and consequently another stormy period commences. All is strife and turmoil. It is the struggle of the oppressed against the oppressor. It is not the gentle mental storm of the silver equinox because the spiritual period of light had preceded that era. But it is the storm of war and bloodshed of a fierce democracy battling for the rights divine of man against usurped authority. It is thus because the Iron Age of oppression has preceded it. We are at the present day passing through this fearful equinoctial period. Now he wrote in the late 1800s, so we've passed that period guys. We are definitely out of this fifth age. We are at the present day passing through this fearful equinoctial period. The fifth race is coming to a close and already forerunners of the sixth race are among the people aiding in the spread of glorious truth. That's you and I guys. We are the sixth race spreading truth on this plane. No wonder then that the signs of the times are so significant and that a real interest in mental and spiritual science is rapidly reawaking within the minds of the masses. The secondary causes, so we've just gone through the first causes of all of the suffering, and that, that is external forces that we cannot control. The secondary causes are man's ignorance and the reactions of his animal nature. That is to say, man makes the conditions that are necessary for his progress by alternately struggling with and yielding to his animal desires.
But for this nature and the experience the soul gains thereby, material incarnation might be dispensed with. The state of suffering depends upon the race, as before stated, but the effects of that suffering are in exact fulfillment of Mother Nature's requirements. Mighty causes produce mighty effects, results, let us say, and vice versa. This law is absolute. Every spiritual atom of life is the direct result of a cause. These atoms differ in power and potency as the stars differ in magnitude. Nature's aim is not equality. In spite of the apparent fact that all forces are ever striving for equilibrium, her grand soul, her grand goal rather, is diversity. Nature's end then is the very opposite of equality. For the grand ultimate aim of every force is the production of variety and the only real difference in any of her infinite number of parts is that of polarity. For instance, the only difference... Yeah, leave it at that. Okay. So if that's not very clear, um, we can make some... We can uh, formulate some questions now, perhaps write some questions questions for later on, please, so that we can go through this material as quick as possible. So there's the uh, two reasons for all the suffering. Okay, So we've got the animal nature of man and we've got basically the, um, the nature of the universe. The universe goes through cycles, the golden age, where bodies are ethereal. Bodies are, 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 much, more, are much less dense than the bodies that we have of um, flesh and blown, bones and blood that we have now. And so we are beginning to see that cycles dominate our plane. Okay, so the science of astrology, folks. I have often presented the, uh, the great works of Marcus Manilius, one of the greatest astrologers of antiquity, 2,000 years ago. Astrologer to Caesar Augustus. In my works, in my presentations, you will find me quoting from this book many, many times. So, at the beginning of his great work, um, the uh, Astronomica by Marcus Manilius, this is how he introduces this beautiful work of great astrology. Deeper knowledge of heaven was first granted to earth by the gift of the gods. Not God not the Creator, the gods. Please pay attention folks. Now these are not, these are, all the gods are expansions of the one Creator. We also are expansions of the one Creator. This does not mean that there is anything impure in this science. It just means that the gods do the work of the God. So the demigods are always in service of the Creator folks. Never are they not in service to the Creator. The only ones who do not serve the Creator are the demons. There are demigods and demons. Look around. That's all there is. We are the demigods. We are the heroes. The demons teach pseudoscience. Mark Dunce, Jan Irvin, Danny Wilton, Johan Oldenkamp, just to name a few of the dunces who are materialists. Oh, and throw in George Neo from Magpie House. They're all waiting for the gag... Galactic Federation of Clowns to come and save us. That's why you shouldn't necessarily worship any of the demigods. Like in the, um, in the Hindu cultures, um, I feel like they worship them, and I they're, they're not to be worshipped. Isn't that correct? Exactly, sister. Only we should worship the Creator. Only, only, only Hare Krishna. Let us not be fools and give our energy to demigods. But the demigods serve us. We don't serve angels. Remember the apostles, the apostle at St. John, when the angel came and he bowed down, he says, you get up. You get up, man. You don't do that to me. And this is why I do not accept any kind of reverence to anything other than the divine source creator. That's me. I don't, I don't know what others feel like. They might feel like uh, you know, paying reverence to Ganesh, to Brahma, or anyone else. To me, I'm a Vaishnava, as, as can be seen by my uh, Tulsi beads and my Tulsi beads. 
this is an indication of one who is devoted to Vishnu, Krishna, and who is a Vaishnava and who only accepts transcendental science. This science. Thank you, uh, Summer. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, uh, jump in, guys, if you want to contribute, please, please contribute. This is this is not just me here, folks. This is interactive, and um, this is for the purpose of correcting all things misplaced, misunderstood, erroneous on this plane. We are Do here. I we are demon slayers. That is our job. Whether you understand that or not, or whether you know that or not, you are here as as Thomas. As H. Burgoyne said, the sixth race is here to alleviate the world from its erroneous ways and to and to help. Sorry, Tantos, does, does this come simply down to cause and effect? You know, everyone's worshipping the effect and no one's looking at the cause. Mm. Does it come down to that, you think? I mean, it's everyone's worshipping the colours and the lights and the obelisks and everything else where they're just not going back to cause. Is it, because basically they see everything in the material world. That's what they're, they're, that's what they're worshipping, materialism. That's when you see you know, uh, things in front of the, the Vatican and so on. They're just worshipping the material version of what they're representing. Is that right? 100%, brother. Yes, they are materialists. Yes. These, these, these images, falsely called idols, they are images to evoke Krishna, Christ, always, yes. and to and to transcend the material consciousness and to embrace the transcendental, not through the trivium. The trivium's for dunces. It's for the materialist logicians going to find the truth through their reason. Oh, you know, this plus that plus this minus that equals this because they have no transcendence. They are meat eaters. Their blood is polluted with the blood of dead animals. They are necrophiliacs. You see Jan Urban with his sizzling bacon. Mmm, I love pig's bum. It makes me what I eat because I am what I eat, you see. These guys, they are bums. Please, folks, do not go after these pro false prophets of the demons. Ask yourself, is that so-called truther a meat eater? If he is, turn your back. You will be fooled by demon worship. Meat eaters cannot teach truth. They will only teach half-truths because they are speculative philosophers. They know not the transcendental science. They have not connected with the source. This goddess side of their right brain, this Lakshmi, Radharani side, has not been balanced with the Krishna side. Here is the logic and here is the reason over here. But without the intuition, they're lost. <coughs> They are stuck in a crystallized, material, mundane, literalist mindset. Run away from these. They are Mayavadis. Mayavadis are false teachers. You will only be led to the truth through syncretism, geocentrism, astrology, and transcendental science. Metaphysical science. Not material science. It's pseudoscience. That's why you can get these buffoons like de Grasse who will sit there going, oh, the earth is an oblate spheroid. It's pear-shaped. You know, and he does all these dance Illuminati. Well, I shouldn't say Illuminati because that's a beautiful word. I, I hate when people use that word in a bad way. Please, let's correct this. It's not the Illuminati. The Illuminati are good folk. These are demons. They are not illuminated. Mm -hmm. They are idiots. They're animal murderers. They teach people to go to McDonald's and eat butchered animals to practice necrophilia so that they can reincarnate as swine and be eaten by swine in their next incarnations. Folks, it's time to correct all the erroneous lies, and that's what I'm here for. Rest assured, I'm here for that. There's no other reason why I'm breathing. <laughs> So, deeper knowledge of heaven was first granted to earth by the gift of the gods. They gifted that to us because they serve Krishna. For who, if the gods wished to conceal it, would have guilefully stolen the secrets of the skies by which all things are ruled? 
Who of but human understanding would have essayed so great a task as to wish against heaven's wish to appear a God himself, to reveal paths on high and paths beneath the bottom of the earth and stars obedient to the appointed orbits through the void? You, God of Silene, that's Mercury. Mercury is the messenger of the God, Hermes, Buddha, Toth, Truth, are the first founder of this great and holy science. Great and holy science. Holy are the stars, folks. All of those stars you see up there and the seven wandering stars and luminaries, they are holy. They teach and transmit the science of universal mind thinking. Through you as man gained a deeper knowledge of the sky, the constellations, the names and courses of the signs, their importance and influences, that the aspect of the firmament might be enhanced, that awe might be roused not only by the appearance but by the power of things, and that mankind might learn wherein lay God's greatest power. Moreover, nature proffered her aid and of her own accord opened up herself, deigning first to inspire those kings whose minds reached out to heights bordering on heaven, kings who civilized savage peoples beneath the eastern sky, where the stars returned to view and soar above the cities of the dusky nations. Then priests who all their lives offered sacrifice in temples and were chosen to voice the people's prayer, secured by their devotion the sympathy of God, their pure minds were kindled by the very presence of the powerful deity. And the God of heaven brought his servants to a knowledge. Shite! Hang on a minute. That was a strong wind which just closed one of my doors. Sorry about that, guys. That was the big bang you heard. Uh, the big bang theory. You know, all of these... All of these theory teachers. Let's get off the theories. There's no more theories. There is only absolute truth. Big Bang theory, evolution theory, theory of relativity, the the gravity theory. I, it, Newton never said it was true. He said it's an hypothesis. Copernicus said, "Well, let's have a look. See, what, shall shall we? What did Copernicus say about his?" Uh, In his book on the uh, glow bull crap that he wrote about, because he was a Jesuit and a demon worshipper and a swine eater, of course they all are, all swine, all the good philosophers were vegetarian folks. Remember this, the Neoplatonists, Plato, Emerson, Pythagoras, Socrates, they were all vegetarian, period, period. Period. Da Vinci. All vegetarians. Hitler was a vegetarian too. Loved animals. Remember that because Hitler came to save the world. Yeah, and he the Khazarian, was, the yeah, Khazarian. He fought for vegetarianism. Sorry? He fought for vegetarianism. He made it like a law in Germany. Absolutely, because he was he was a transcendental scientist. He was not into speculative buffoon science. This is why they've gone so far out of the way to make him look like a villain and an evil criminal. He was nothing of the sort. He was a true, true hero. Just like JFK, they killed him too because JFK wanted to do the same thing, get rid of the evil banks, fiat currency, fractional reserve currency which is enslaving us, for the demons who come from the subterranean planes for the purpose of controlling us, parasiting of us, and so that they can keep their government, which is called Pimpocracy, the true name of democracy, demon crazy, demon worship, democracy, Pimpocracy. That's all it is. And here's Copernicus with his other theory of buffoons. On, in Revolution of the um, Celestial Spheres in 1543, five years after the Jesuits were founded, he said, The hypothesis 
of the movement of the earth is one only in which is useful to explain phenomena but should not be considered as absolute truth. That's why we are here considering absolute truth right now. Hallelujah. So, continuing on guys, because this is these are the real God worshippers. Astrologers are not atheists. They're not astronomers. They are astrologers. Transcendental science is the worship of the Creator. Astronomy is the worship of buffoonery, of idiots, meat eaters. Sorry guys, I get a kick out of repeating all of these things because I'm going after, I'm going to slay the demons and you'll help me and we will all band together against demon worship and we will knock these idiots off their soap up, soap boxes, these Mark Dunces, and we will put them in their place, if not in jail. That's where we'll put them, in jail for, uh, for um, taking advantage of the credulity and the gullibility of the masses. They are gullible and incredulous. And they need our help now, 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 mm -hmm. urgently, urgently. But long ages sharpened human wits, the struggle for survival. Uh, anyway, look, that's enough. Um, oh, hang on. No, I was in the wrong place. Their pure minds were kindled by the very presence of the powerful deity, and the God of heaven brought his servants to a knowledge of heaven and disclosed its secrets to them. The God of heavens, guys, not the demons. They serve themselves. Remember this, please. Please, do yourself a favor and elevate your soul to the heavens through the stars. The stars are there to help us. They are our friends and our brothers, divine and forever, forever serving Krishna. All the good ones are serving the Lord. All of them. So, these were the men who founded our noble science and were the first by their art to discern the destinies dependent on the wandering stars. You see the seven wandering stars, folks? Saturn, Jupiter, they are our teachers. They serve us. They are demigods. They're not perfect. They're not God. But they are demigods, half-gods, as we are. We are not God. Do never say you are God. You say you are God-like, because that you are. For God is God, and you are you, and you will always be you. You will never be God. You will be a God, as you are. Let us correct these things, folks. Let us correct these things. After every aspect, so embracing long ages in unremitting toil, they assign to each period of time its particular events, noting an individual's nativity, the birth chart, and the subsequent pattern of his life, the influence of each hour on the laws of fate, and the great differences affected by smaller moments. After every aspect of the sky has been observed, as the stars return to their original positions, and each figuration had assigned to it its powers of influence and accordance with the sure cycles of destiny. By repeated practice and with examples pointing the way, experience built up the science, and from wide observation discovered that by hidden laws the stars wield sovereign power and that all heaven moves to the eternal spirit of reason and by sure tokens distinguishes the vicissitudes of fate. Marcus Manilius. Okay, remind me next week I shall read some more from here. Moving on. Plutarch. Now Plutarch was not a Neoplatonist. He was in the middle, in the first century, around about the time when the supposed historical Jesus lived. This guy wrote 85 books and Jesus didn't write any. Hmm. So one would be historical, the other isn't, because the other is the eternal Jesus that dwells in our hearts, folks. There's no mud mundane history, and even if there was, it's dead. History 
is dead. You can never bring it back to life. Never. It's gone. There is only now. So it doesn't matter whether Jesus, whether you think he, in terms of the Jehovah's Witness Jesus or the Mormon Jesus, it's gone. There's only one Jesus, and that is in you, and you will never be able to extricate him from you. And it is the Messiah and the leader of the way. So in Obsolence of Oracles, the Obsolence of Oracles by Plutarch, he was um, in the first century, so he was after Plato by four or five hundred years and before the Neoplatonists by three hundred years. But this guy was vegetarian, of course, otherwise I wouldn't be reading from his books. I will only transmit information from transcendental vegetarians, geocentrists. I will not be polluting your mind from the minds of polluted worldly speculative philosophers a la Descartes, a la Hegel, Darwin, Newton, Copernicus, Kepler, Aristotle, and all of these idiots, Einstein, a buffoon, a monkey man, nothing but monkey men, and they come from monkeys, sure, and they'll go back to monkeys in their next life to be eaten by monkeys. Others postulate a transmutation for bodies and souls alike. In the same manner in which water is seen to be generated from earth, air from water and fire from air, as their substance is borne upward, even so from men to heroes and from heroes into demigods, the better souls obtain their transmutation. But from the demigods, a few souls still in the long reach of time because of supreme excellence come after being purified to share completely in divine qualities. But with some of these souls, it comes to pass that they do not remain, maintain control over themselves, but yield to temptation and are again clothed with mortal bodies and have a dim and darkened life like mist or vapor. You see, brothers, it's telling us here that we are heroes. We are to be heroes and demigods and transmute and sublimate our soul qualities. But some, it says, they yield to temptation. These are the monkey men who are teaching pseudoscience about a globe and gravity. Hocus pocus buffoonery. Macrobius. Neoplatonist, 400 years after Plutarch, vegetarian, of course. You ain't going to get nothing but vegetarians from me, brothers. The goddess is brought in grieving. So among the Assyrians or Phoenicians then, the goddess is brought in grieving. Why is the goddess grieving? Because the sun... In, make it, in making its annual progress through the twelve signs in sequence, enters into the lower hemisphere too. Lower hemisphere meaning, meaning the outer plane. Of course, who knows? These guys, I, I believe the Neoplatonists Neoplaton, were tampered. Their books were tampered by the Jesuits. They rewrote history, guys. And so they, they actually put global crap in their writings to confuse us. But these guys knew we lived on a, on a disc plane. Six of the zodiac signs being considered upper signs, six of them lower. And when he is among the lower signs, the sun of course, therefore makes the days shorter. The goddess is believed to mourn. As though the sun has been for a time snatched away by death and is being kept by proserpina who I have said is the divinity of the earth's lower zone and the people who dwell there. They believe that Adonis is again restored to Venus and Adonis is the sun, folks. Never forget, it's always the sun. Krishna, the sun. Jesus, the sun. Adonis, Apollo, the sun. All is the sun. The sun is the hero. Samson in the sky. Shimshem, the little sun. Abraham, the sun, Brahma, the sun, you name it, it's the sun, <laughs> the chief life giver, it's always the sun. 
because the sun is the, the chief expansion of Krishna. Vivasvan, Surya, Asura Mazda, it's always the sun. Ain't nothing but the sun in existence. The sun is the glory of the universe. They believe that Adonis is again restored to Venus when the sun overcome, overcomes the six lower signs and begins to illuminate our zone's hemisphere with lengthening days. And as you can see, folks, this is from my from my graphics. You will see what he's talking about is the six lower signs of the zodiac. This is the um, this is the equinoctial line here, and so these are the six lower signs here, and these are the higher signs. Aries starts here in the springtime, and so. This is why the, the goddess she weeps because when the sun when the sun is in the lower um, lower hemisphere here um, from Libra from Libra to um, Pisces there is suffering the goddess is weeping because the Donus the sun is very very low in the sky and 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 its rays are very very weakened by the winter the wintry um, signs. They say, however, that Adonis was killed by a boar. Yes, so was Tammuz. So was Nimrod. <laughs> All of the sun heroes were killed by a boar, a wild boar, because it's the boar of winter and the sun gets murdered and slaughtered on the 25th of December. St. Thomas Day, St. Tammuz Day. And this is where the sun is slaughtered by a boar, an animal, because it's an animalistic thing. Using that animal to represent the winter, there you go. Because the boar, being shaggy and rough, delights in places that are damp, muddy and covered with frost, and it forages for acorns. The quintessential produce of winter. Winter, then, is in a sense a wound inflicted on the sun, since it robs us of light and heat, a loss deadly to living things. Okay, folks, you see, this is the true science. This is this is teaching this is teaching us the cycles that we live in. They are cycles, and the sun goes in and out through these cycles and so this is why astrology is so important and in my presentations I have always showed how we can use the science to be able to um, to be able to understand all things here is a book called uh, Dance of the Zodiac by um, William Shribe and I've often presented this and he goes he goes into all the astrological signs to show how you can recognize the features of the signs and you can tell and distinguish all the individual signs. Here is the sign of Capricorn. Clearly you can see the Capricornian features because the sun on the ecliptic produces all these different features. Let's have a look at some of these features, shall we? So, physical traits. Capricorn rules the knees and the skeletal system. There are 12 systems in the body. Aries rules the cerebral spine, the cerebrospinal system. Taurus rules the uh, um, lymphatic system. Gemini, the next sign, rules the lungs, the twins, the two lungs, the breathing, the respiratory system. So Capricorn rules the skeletal system. It's quite easy to understand. We are the temple of soul of man, Solomon. The cardinal earth forces of Capricorn are contained and centered in the knees, the part of the body ruled by this sign. At these bony joints, the high-stepping centaur thighs turn to the back. To planet, to planet the feet firm, to plant the feet firmly on the ground with their knees to the front. Capricorn's knees carry them steadily 
Someone needs to uh, mute their mic. There's a bit of noise there in the background. Um, the resulting body mechanics send the butt to the back as it tilts in the upper torso and the head first. That's what he's talking about there. Um, the body rulership, so this angle points the head down to the ground. The eyes must be aimed upward so that the goat can see the craggy peaks that lie ahead. This bodily rulership greatly defines this creature's physical features as Saturn's constraining energies reduce the size of the body parts. The extremities, like those of the crab, are thin and short. Unlike cancer, the torso and the shoulders are also minimized. These goat-like features are prominent in the makeup of Anthony Hopkins and James Earl Jones. Both have Capricorn suns and rising signs. Jones also has the Capricorn moon. This triple earth accounts for his deep resonant voice. Both display the deep set eyes and the eyelids that wrap to the sides of the face. The wide cheekbones, the long dipping snout and the large thin edged upper lip plate. It, the features are clear guys. The signs tropically can be distinguished only through the western tropical hermetic biblical astrology which I teach. This does not work in sidereal. Sidereal is out of whack. This is why when you see people who go with the sidereal system and they say, oh I'm a I'm an Aquarian, Aquarian, and clearly they have Piscean features because it's out of whack. Mm -hmm. I um I don't have that book, Santos, but uh, just from watching your presentations, um, I've been able to call them out nine times out of ten, every single one. <laughs> yeah, you can always. Yeah. Hey, um, Summer, um, have a bit of a chat for a minute. I've got to do something. Just be back in one minute, please. Uh, continue on, folks. Back in a minute. So, um, I just saw the movie Star Wars in theater with my grandma because she wanted to go see a movie with me. And um, <clears throat> I don't know if anybody has seen that, but I noticed the subliminals in there of uh, one of the, the, the weapons of mass destruction that they were using is that they were sucking the sun's power um, and harnessing it to basically end the world, and it backfired on them. And uh, it just, it just, it was just interesting. All the subliminals in there, and especially the previews that were um, that went on before the movie start. Um, uh, X Men Apocalypse. That was really frightening. <laughs> like, um, I don't know if they're just trying to mess with people's heads. But um, I already just like doing normal mainstream uh, society stuff. I just don't feel right. I feel really uncomfortable. And watching that, I was just, it was really bizarre because they are basically bringing like the Antichrist into the movie. And they were, it's just really crazy. If nobody's seen that trailer, you should totally check it out because it's really freaky. It's really, 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 really weird. Really weird. Yes, Summer, so are the subliminals in the new X-Files movie. He, I, have you seen those? X-Files or X-Men? X-Files. No, I have not seen that. I thought that was a show. Yeah, well, check it out. There's actually uh, also some subliminals in there. Pretty interesting. Yeah, mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah I knew another one. Sorry. It, okay. The X-Files... Oh, who let him go? Go for it. No, go on. I'm eating. Was just, the the, the, the X-Files trailer was really blatant about... Uh, well, the, someone put one up on the uh, chat uh, the other day, and it was it's so blatant. It's uh, 
I really don't get that. Uh, it, it, it has everything that's pretty much up in the forefront of the truth movement at the moment. Just that guy's um, uh, that scene. I'm not, I'm not familiar with it. I just saw that scene, and it is right up the front on everything that the truth movement's talking about at the moment. Very yep. strange. Yeah, before, before you had came back, uh, Santos, I had mentioned that I went to see Star Wars with my grandmother and um, the the previews where um, they put one with the X-Men, the new movie, the X-Men Apocalypse. And I don't know if you've seen that trailer, but you should really check it out. It's really disturbing. Um, <clears throat> they're basically talking about, uh, in the beginning, they were saying uh, he's been called many names, you know, Krishna, Buddha, Jesus, and or Yeshua. And uh, basically, it's the Antichrist. And, and all the X-Men were his children. And uh, how he comes back and he's like, literally the Antichrist and he can control all of them because they he is their father and it's just really freaky because like certain parts of it is just really weird so I don't know maybe I'll post that on my Facebook or in the group thingy so yeah that was my little tidbit yeah look I think the um, the truth is going mainstream guys it's gone mainstream it, it's I'll tell you why because the truth will prevail. The scripture says nothing that has been done in hidden will not be revealed in the last hour, in the last day. It's Armageddon. It's the Gotadamarun. Mm -hmm. It's the meltdown of demon worship. Demon ver worship is being vanquished by all the good people in the world. Not only us who are down here at, at um, you know, the, um, the front lines, but also the ones who are behind. This is why People get confused. You know, they get confused with, they say, oh, things like, okay, here's an example. There's a guy out there doing videos on the flat earth and, um, or, or, or against the flat earth saying that it's, it's Freemasonic. It's a Freemasonic free PSYOP. No, no, it's not. No. Of course, flat earth, of course, the Freemasons have it have their um, teaching of flat earth. They all do. Christians do. It's in the Bible. There is no there is no ball anywhere. There never has been a ball. So of course the Freemasons are supporting flat earth. Of course the Jews are. Of course the Catholic Church is. They supported it for thousands of years until Copernicus came along and then Galileo Galilei, the idiot, who said, e pur si muove, e pur si muove. Mm -hmm. Those are the famous words that all these idiots quote. Oh, yes, well, it moves. Because Galileo, that was his last words before he, he recanted. And the church allowed him to go on. And now we accept that it's a ball. Mm -hmm. No no one, no intelligent person have ever, has ever accepted it to be a ball. Only idiots. And I was an idiot for accepting it myself. I'll admit that. But never again. Never again will I fall into this stupidity. Time for truth and only truth. And so all these... All these half-truthers, again, they're eating too much meat. They're doing a good job exposing the, 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 the lies, but they're polluting it with, with demon teachings, you see. Here's another one. You get all these goody-goody, two-shoed Christian people, you know, saying, oh, it's a flat earth, of course, and, and, if, and, and, and the atheists are teaching the globe, which is true, and then, they, and then they turn around and say, and this is because we are unique and there's only one universe and we are the center of the universe. No, we are the center of this universe. Everyone else is in the center of their universe. Let us not limit the creator to one universe. So these churchgoers, again, promoting filth and stupidity, limiting God. Why would we limit the creator? The creator can make endless, infinite universes, and he does. And so it's time to correct everything, and that's what I'm here for. I, I, I'm not going to tolerate... Santos, may I ask a question, please? Yeah. Well, would you consider would you consider that even the creator has said enough that he actually said, okay, this is enough free will. You guys really went against every natural law which I have been putting out, and this is enough. One hundred percent, mate. It's all coming from Radharana and Krishna. They are sick of it. It's time. It says in Bhagavad Gita, it says, when demon worship prospers, 
and people follow the demons and it's, it's too much, I'll come in and smash the demon hordes. I posted it on my Facebook page two days ago from Va uh, Vamsi. Check out Vamsi's work, guys. Go to, um, is that, is that, did I say that right? Vamsi? Yeah, I know what you're talking about. B A M S I. Yeah, it should be. It should be in this call. It should be in there. Vamsi uh, uh, quoted Bhagavad Gita, where Krishna says, "I I come to vanquish the demons when everybody goes following the demons." That's I kind of talk about. Yeah, they talk about like the four horses, and it's green, white, um, red, and black one, and. Uh, but the thing is, like from the previews, is the guy is the Antichrist. So it's like it's it's polluting your mind with their BS because it's supposed to be like some some saving the day, and he's basically using the X Men to I don't know maybe that was just a misleading ad, and it was it's really he's the good guy, but I don't think so. It really was depicted very demonic, and it was really I felt uncomfortable. I was like, okay, this is gone a little too far. Yeah, yeah, look, um, you've got to understand that the people in Hollywood, and I imagine that some of the people that I quoted at the start of this uh, call and called them out for their shilling, um, <laughs> they, they also are under threat. I mean, they make their livelihood from spewing and vomiting lies all day long, and they work for NASA, and they, they are a PSYOP, and they get paid well to act intelligent and tell us that the earth is pear-shaped when clearly the CGI Disneyland NASA cartoon images of the earth are perfectly spherical. And so they're trying to screw with our heads. They're trying to make us all confused and, 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 and just led about like sheep without a shepherd. We need a shepherd. We need a shepherd and, and, and the shepherd is syncretism. Geocentrism, astrology, that's the true shepherd. We're going to bring people back to the truth, man. That's why we're here. No more time for farting around with pseudoscientists and these idiots. Call them out. Knock them off their soapboxes. They're morons. They are destructive to themselves and to the rest of humanity. So it's our duty. We are demon slayers helping Krishna slay demons. They've got to be vanquished from this plane. We have no other thing to do, guys. We are warriors. There's nothing else to do. There's no jobs. There's no corporate ladders. There's no Joneses to keep up with. That's all a crock. That's all an illusion. <clears throat> our true destiny, our true calling was to vanquish the lies. And we do it with our hearts. You see, the, the logicians, the, the trivium dancers, they're stuck in their brain. They're not. They're not. They don't understand trans, transcendental science, which comes from the heart. It doesn't come from this matter here. It comes from the heart. We have opened our hearts. We love the truth. We live for truth. We don't look back. We are the true ones. Continuing on, because I want to do one or two of these every week. Okay, so we can get the true science in us. So continuing on with these beautiful um, signs, and he's done a wonderful job. This is the best astrological book you'll ever get, man. It's 20 bucks a pop, and you can support Bill William Schreib, who is struggling still, struggling still, and he's got this, the best book, and yet you get all these people spending $100 on, on idiot fiction books and, and pseudoscience crap, whereas they could be learning this and teaching this. The Capricorns... Yeah, on. Ruby just said that um, she thinks that uh, extraterrestrials are demons, and they absolutely, most likely are. <laughs> oh, that was me. Yeah. Alan. Oh, wait. Who's that? That was me. Okay. Yeah, well, she's right, whoever it was. 100%. Yeah. The Capricorn sun signs above exhibit varying degrees of the drive of cardinal earth. They're very cardinal Capricorns, real climbers. Diane Keaton, Eddie Vedder, 
Ava Gardner and Judd Law show that wide, down-drawn cheekbones of a short-jawed goat. Veda shows how these craggy cheeks are firmly set at a young age. That's why younger goats appear so serious and why they mellow and appear younger looking with age. The long-faced version of this sign includes... Okay, out come the glasses. <laughs> Ted Danson, Denzel Washington and Nicolas Cage, the long-faced version. There's always two or three versions, okay? And you'll see it. You open your eyes. That's all you have to do. Goats in a happier mood will often present the tight smile with the twisted snarl on each on one side. This is seen with Kate Couric and Bet White. In the sparkling crystal eyes of Sissy Space Sissy Spasek, we see the contentment of a soul who has reached the top of a mountain. Okay, so that's just a brief, you know, um, description of the features. I'll do one more. Let's try Aquarius, shall we? Or anyone want to pick a, pick a sign? Libra! Libra! That's my son's sign. Yep, that's me. Libra, Aquarius. <laughs> Aquarius. We'll do that next week. So today we've got Capricorn and Libra, the two cardinal signs. So here we go. Have a look at the beautiful round features, everything round, balanced. This sign makes the best, according to Bill, William, the best supermodels come from this sign because their, <laughs> their bodies are straight, balanced. It's the balance, the roundness of the head. Everything's round. These people are in the mind. Then, you know, um, all of the singers from this sign, like John Lennon, uh, Bruce Springsteen, um, they they all all the mental all the air signs, Gemini, Bob Dylan, they're all political. They all talk about mental themes. You see, John Lennon, he was a hero mm -hmm. because these guys these guys love justice. They love truth and balance. And, and in their songs, they don't go on, you know, emotionally like the water signs. Cancer, for instance, you know, crying that their, their girlfriend left them. And these guys don't, don't sing about those things. They, they have, they have um, justice on their mind and humanitarian themes, the Aquarians especially. That's what they'll sing about. You know, um, uh, Tim Buckley, an Aquarian. All about saving humanity. All about humanitarian themes. So get to know the signs, folks. Get to know your brothers and sisters through their sign because they are conditioned by those elements. They are conditioned by those beautiful signs, the 12 tribes of Israel. These are the 12 tribes. I belong to the tribe of Gad, Ares. Gad is God because God is here, up high, elevated in the heaven head heaved up. So this is the tribe of Gad. This is the tribe of Asher, Taurus. And these are the two signs, the lamb and the bull. The lamb of God, Jesus, and the bull, Krishna with his bulls. And, they, and, and the head directs the body. So they are the, the horned signs and they lead the body. So Gad, God, leads the body. <clears throat> The rulership of body areas started at the head in Aries. Appropriately, when we reach the midpoint between the head and the feet, we are in the region of the body ruled by the opposite sign of Aries, Libra. Here, the lumbar and the kidneys make up this arena of rulership. Also, in some traditional listings, this rulership includes the surface of all the skin. So you can see Libra rules the... Um, the um, What's the dermatological? What's the the, the skin called? The um, integumentary. The integumentary system. 
right? I'll leave it at that. You okay. say. <laughs> yeah, that's no idea. Epidermis. Yeah, and they and they and they they usually either have skin problems or good skin. Mm -hmm. My son's Libra, and he had eczema. Yeah. And it was easily treatable, but they they are prone to these. And Geminians also get a lot of eczema. Because and the we're skin, lose. The sorry, skin, because the skin is just in a, a larger kidney. To be honest, it's the same thing. So. The kidneys rule the skin in, in a way. So. Yeah, yeah, and we're going to have a look at that in a minute with this. Facial diagnosis of cell salt deficiencies according to the 12 signs. Okay, so yeah. there's, there's, there's a lot more to come, folks. Every week we're going to be doing astrology, flat earth, geocentrism, syncretism. You're in the best. Oops, you, sorry. You, you, you are getting the best transcendental science on the planet bar... None. Bar none. None. Okay. Also, in some traditional listings, this rulership includes the surface of all the skin. These rulerships account for Libra's perfectly proportioned features, their creamy, smooth skin, and their easy-going, well-balanced mannerisms. Thank you, Summershine. As Librans glide across the floor, their bodies seem to be perfectly erect. The hands are held low with fingers pointing to the sides, arms moving in and out to teeter the torso left or right to maintain the balance. Many people with this sign seem to walk like they have a, a, a book balanced on their head. Perhaps this is why so many of them are fashion models. The body is full and rounded like a cumulus cloud, light but not necessarily lean. All sections of the body are evenly proportioned. The head often appears slightly larger than normal. Now we're going to have a look at these two, Barbara Walters and uh, Jimmy Carter. Barbara Walters and Jimmy Carter are both Librans with Libra rising. In their bone structure, and facial features, the archetypal shapes and qualities of Libra are enhanced, since the solar expressions and the mask are one and the same. There is no filter to slow their rapid delivery of words. They both say what they think. And you'll see they do. They, they're very, very... They're the life of the party, Librans, the life of the party. Very sanguine, which is one of the four um, qualities. You've got your choleric, uh, so your Librans and your and your Leos, you've got your um, melancholic and sanguines, which are Librans, um, and then you've got your phlegmatics, etc. So, so um, what he's saying here is that since these two have both rising and sun, uh, he mentioned the the mask here. Well, the mask is usually the rising sign. So my rising sign is Leo, and that's the mask I put on. So I'm acting through my feline Leo um, mask, personality. It's more like the personality than anything else. Whereas the sun is everything. It encompasses the whole lot. Your soul, your spirit, everything. Every archetype is the sun. The moon is more like the soul and the reactive uh, nature. So my Pisces moon is, you know, there's two, there's a believing side of me and then there's a doubting side. And sometimes I doubt very much. And it's a very powerful sign for the moon. It's very emotional. And you're always going like this. One day you believe in yourself, and the next day you doubt yourself. And so and so the moon I'm is like, a reaction. My rising is rising, so I feel you there. Which one? I said my rising is Pisces, 29 degrees of Pisces. So I feel Okay, you. well then, well that's, that's your, your mask more so than your reactive nature. Your moon will be the reacting nature. But your mask is Pisces, so your your um, um, the way people see you is through that mask, and so they see sometimes a doubting summer, and then they see a very confident summer, and so this flip flopping is going to be going on because that's your ascendant. Your rising sign has two natures about it. One fish is rising high, the other fish goes downward and doubts. Okay, so continuing on. 
These Libra sun signs exhibit varying degrees of the equaling force of the drive of cardinal air. Kate Winslet and Will Smith both project Libra's calming force. Uh, where are they? There. And who was the other guy I just mentioned? Um, Will Smith. Okay, the calming Libran nature. Even in the most titanic and catastrophic situations, Cheryl Teagues, Gwyneth Paltrow. Oh, gee, I got Kate Winslet wrong before, didn't I? Where's Kate? Oh, there she is over there. Sorry, guys. These two were the first two. <laughs> I don't watch a lot of movies. I've got better movies going on in here and in my heart than all the movies of Hollywood put together. Oh, it's a waste of time. Movies are a waste of time for me. Oh, they're just so boring. All the, even the exciting ones, you know, they're just, they're so dumb. <laughs> Hollywood's a crock. You, you can sit in meditation for five minutes and you can make a billion movies a trillion times better than anything Hollywood has ever put out. Ugh, whoa, what a waste of time. Um, Gwyneth Paltrow and Annette Funicello, with their ever-present smiles, present the natural beauty of Venus influence. Venus is the ruler, whereas Saturn was the ruler of Capricorn. John Lennon and Dwight Ike Eisenhower showed their persuasive drive in peace and war. President Ike, along with Mickey Mantle, Kelly Reaper and Matt Damon, strongly di display Libran's recognisable facial features. Note how the eyebrows, the level eyebrows and the wide upper eyelids stretch out to the sides from the sparkling almond eyes. Level eyebrows. Look at those level eyebrows. That's the Libra scale, guys. Watch for those. Also, you'll notice how the spherical cheekbones, cheekbones cap the easily recognized Libra smile, which runs from ear to ear as it forms the V-shaped lines and vertical, long vertical dimples. Well, have a look at Matt Damon's long vertical dimples. Have a look at this guy. Long vertical dip dimples, round balanced heads, flat level eyebrows. All right, moving on. The cell salts. I've done a lot in my presentations. Check out Secret of Secrets, the elixir of life hiding in your body presentation of mine, where I use this book here. And we're going to go into this book by George Carey, who added to Schussler and his 12 tissue salts, Zodiac and the Salts of Salvation. Also, check out Your Body is the Holy Land presentation of mine. Okay, Secret of Secrets, the Elixir of Life, Hiding in Your Body. Those two presentations. So let's do um, one of these a week, okay, for the benefit of one and all. Starting off with. Um, Cancer, I think. Yes, cancer, the sign of cancer, folks. These are the deficiencies of cancerians. Uh, calcium fluoride, you heard it. Calcium fluoride is the tissue salt for cancerians. Sodium silcofluoride, that's the poison they put in your toothpaste. That is poison. You see, this is why the elite controllers are very, very astute and clever. They know that we don't do our homework, so we think, oh, yeah, fluoride's good for the skin. It's good for the teeth, for sure. Yes, it is. Calcium fluoride, not sodium fluoride. That is totally, totally a poison and should not be ingested by human beings. You kill rats with that. Okay, so calcium fluoride. There you go. Have you seen anybody with these big cracks in their tongue? Yellow tongues? This man's teeth are very translucent, characteristic of a calcium fluoride deficiency. This will be your cancerians, man. I've seen it in cancerians all the time. The tongue pimples are a sign of a NAT phos deficiency, sodium phosphate. Sodium phosphate is Libran deficiency, guys. That's the salt of Librans. Now, how do we know this? Well, because George Carey did many, many clinical tests on lots of patients 
and he found the truth, the universal truth that every sign is deficient in three salts. Me being Aries, I'm deficient in Aries, Taurus and Gemini. So I need potassium phosphate for Aries, I need sodium sulfate for Taurus and potassium chloride for Gemini. I must take those and I do. In fact, I'll show you. Here are my salts, guys. Califos. Do you know any other brands? Because I went to the store where I am, and the only brand that they had was the um, Bioplasma. But there's um, there's lactose in it. Yeah, these these uh, liquid ones do not have lactose. These are from Martin and Pleasants, an Australian company. They do have alcohol. They have um, okay. I, I prefer the um, the alcohol ethanol. I mean, you know. So what? Um, I I prefer that than lactose or sorbitol. Right. Sorbitol. Yeah. So and I also take the the combination of twelve. You know, I mean, you probably shouldn't because it's counterintuitive. You should take one salt. So, so for instance, you, uh, Summer, you're Libra, and so you need sodium, sol um, sodium phosphate, NatFos, and then you need the Scorpio one, which is calcium sulfate, and Sagittarius, which is silica. Calcium sulfate. Sorry? You said calcium sulfate. I'm writing them down. Yeah, yeah, calcium sulfate for Scorpio. And silica, okay, thank you. And Sagittarius and silica, yep. Can you just get a really good sea salt? Yeah, man, yeah, yeah, just take massive doses of Himalayan yeah. salt and a Celtic sea salt, man. I just put a tablespoon. Yeah. Every time I go past my um, salt jar in the kitchen, I yeah. just, I, I, mix, I mix the two together, um, Himalayan salt and Celtic sea salt, I mix them together. I grab a, a, a teaspoon, put it in water, and just gulp it down. I love salt. It is it is electrical charge. Your body needs electrons, minerals. You can get it from salt. It is voltage. All your body is looking for is voltage. You can dispense with food, man. Stop stop worrying about all this food stuff. We're eating like gluttons. I know. I've been doing the same thing. Just just putting the good salt in there, the good Himalayan stuff, getting the best stuff I could find, and. Uh, uh, I have the your health book, and I didn't read it yet. So I said, well, in the meantime, I might as well just, you know, dump everything in there so I can uh, cover all bases. Mm -hmm. Yep, done well. All right, so let's continue on, please. Um, the tongue pimples are a sign of NatFos deficiency, right? Sodium phosphate, Libran salt. So those are the tongue pimples. See the little pimples? Okay, so, so that's sodium phosphate deficiency. You can clear those up in weeks. And that is calcium fluoride for cancerians, folks. And the, and the, the teeth, see the translucent teeth? So, and it's a possible, it says here, it's a possible overgrowth of candida in the body. So you can get rid of candida in the body with nat phos, folks. All right, let's have a look at this calcium fluoride, another telltale sign. Look at those wrinkles. The picture shows a severe calcium fluoride deficiency with the fan-shaped crow's feet. There is a waxy calcium phosphate deficiency noticeable above the eyes. The bag under the lower eyes indicates a nat sulf deficiency and can be a sign of kidney or liver problems. Calcium fluoride. So yes, just, um, sorry. What was nat phos? You said you get candida and get rid of getting rid of nat. What's nat phos? Phosphorus? So, sodium phosphorus. Sodium oh, okay. phosphate. Okay, okay. These are the 12 salts. You'll learn about them in the presentation I mentioned before. So no need to be too particular right now. You can always... Um, um, replay this um, today's show and, and get into more detail but um, I would seriously be getting I, this this book is a must 
and the three books that I'm showing now, you, you've got to have those in your library, folks. You've got to have them in your library, and you will be the complete, complete mystic, not philosopher, speculative, materialist, mundane. You will be a transcendental, metaphysical, mystical being transported to the heavens of divine knowledge. You will have direct knowledge. You won't be speculating in opinions, guys. No more opinions. You will know who you are and you will know what is what. Um, let me just get all these pictures clearly. So um, calcium fluoride, picture A. I, I missed picture A. I did picture B and picture C. Um, let's do A. The close-up of this eye shows a typical calcium fluoride raised wrinkle in the corner of the eye and the brownish black circle under the eye. The eye has a deep set silica look. Okay? The waxy colouring around the eyes shows a calcium phosphate deficiency. That's calcium phosphate is um, Capricorn deficient. That's Capricorn, the bones, calcium. Calcium good for the bones, Capricorn. So, so what it's saying here is the waxy colouring around the eyes shows a calcium phosphate <laughs> deficiency. This waxiness covers an underlying red layer of skin. The red layer shows a mag magnesium phosphate deficiency. That's Leo. For all you Leo guys listening, magnesium phosphate. The half eyebrow is a possible indication of hypothyroid condition. The half eyebrow. See that half eyebrow? That eyebrow should be full. See, there's no, it stops here. That is a hypothyroid condition, and magnesium phosphate will correct that. Wow. Okay, let's have a look at the last picture for, cal for cancer. Um, picture number D. Have a look at this guy. The brownish black circle under his eye exemplifies a calcium fluoride deficiency. Brownish black circle. This man also has a silica deficiency indicated by his deep set eyes. He also has a liver problem and his yellowish brown liver sign can be addressed by using Kali sulfate. So that's potassium Potassium sulfate, that is um, Virgo. Potassium sulfate, yeah, that's Virgo. What was the Libra one again? Potassium sulfate. No, sorry, that's that's Libra. Libra again. Calcium Excuse me. Is what I have. Cal what what was it for Libra? Calcium sulfate. I had uh, sodium phosphate for Libra. Yeah, sodium, yeah, sodium phosphate, phosphate, calcium phosphate, and silica. Yeah. Sodium phosphate is for Libra, yes. So that, mm -hmm. that's Virgo, calcium, um, um, potassium sulfate, Virgo. Okay, so those are the deficiencies, guys. See that? You can see it clearly. And everyone, all we have to do is administer salt to our body. Salt, you are the salt of the earth. You can preserve your life. You can preserve your being with salt. It's electric, correct? Sorry? It's electric. It's just electricity, correct? It's electric current, voltage. Your body thrives on electricity. Everything is electrical. Everything you see. There is nothing that your eye does not see that is not an electrical phenomena. Um, courtesy of magnetism, back of electricity. They work together. Dr. Bob Beck did some amazing research in that regard, Santos. Who? Dr. Bob Beck. Bob Can you Beck. Can you? Bob Beck. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Hakan. And here are all the deficiencies, guys, and that's where you look for them. You might want to scan this page just quickly. Um, the name of that book again, I'm sorry. No problem. Facial diagnosis of self Okay. Now there's only I love this book, but there's only one problem with this book and it really annoys me. He does not start with Aries. You must start everything you do astrological, everything. Must. 
begin with Aries. He starts with Cancer. He he groups them in all the you know the potassiums and the and the the calciums. So he groups them like ke chemically, and he ignores the astrological um, order of things, which is very very irritating because you don't know where you are in the book. So. Um, that's today's um, that's today's call. We're going to do questions and answers now, and we're just going to do contributions. Anyone who wants to contribute, please contribute whatever you can to what I've just presented. Um, I'll be back in a minute. I've got to. Um, I'm drinking so much, guys. I've just got to take a loo break. <laughs> so take over, someone. Okay. And now we're all silent. <laughs> I think Tom has a question. Maybe you want to address this summer. Yeah, what is it? Just read it. Oh, shoot. Okay. Yeah, let me see it. Oh, my mouth is cracking. Okay, Tom. I really think it's really quite fun to think most extraterrestrials are demons. When we are cosmic beings in some point of a galaxy, I think they're demonic and angelic beings everywhere. Yeah, of course, but um, the thing is, is that, because um, Santos has addressed this too, the ones that are interfering as far as like the grays and coming here, they're coming up from lower dimensional type of uh, places. So they're more... They're probably 99% demons. Um, uh, the higher frequency, the angelic ones, aren't going to manifest in a dense form. They're going to come to you through telepathy, through your dreams. Now, you can still get psychically attacked by demons, but they're going to probably manifest through people um, as far as like uh, just bodies in general. But you can have heavenly beings come here too, but I just don't think that they're going to interfere the way that we've been interfered with through chronic but that's just me. And demons may be able to shift into something that looks like aliens too. Mm -hmm. So that's, there's that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we were just ad addressing uh, Tom's question, Santos, about uh, he was saying like it was he thinks it's really close-minded to think that most extraterrestrial beings are demons when we are cosmic beings in some point of a galaxy. Um, he thinks that there are demonic and angelic beings everywhere. I didn't hear you well, man. Uh, Summer, can you? Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, here. Uh, um, speak he speak into the mic. That... Can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay, yeah. He was saying uh, he heard that Sirius beings are from Sirius and Pleiades. And... Um, think that it was really close-minded to think that extraterrestrial beings are demons and stuff. And I completely agree with you, Tom, about the serious beings. That is absolutely, um, they are clearly from serious. And uh, do, you, do you want to address that now, Santos, about um, the serious when, uh, how long ago that actually was? Well, well, I read about that last week. I read that from Macrobius's... Um, commentary on the dream of Scipio, how all the ancients said that our souls come from the stars. There's no doubt about that. We come from the stars and beyond. So it's it's not a point of whether we come from the, this star system or that star system. It matters not, but because we are star stuff. I've explained this many, many times in my presentation, but the point is this, that the extraterrestrials that are sharing technology with us and pretending to be good and coming to save us they are not from there. God, only the only the Lord, the Supreme Lord, does that. He doesn't send spaceships and 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 people to share technology with it. They are coming from the subterranean planets. There's no doubt about that. <laughs> They're not coming from the. Yeah, and I always thought that it was really funny whenever people would talk about like aliens and their ships and stuff. It's like a true divine being doesn't need a spaceship to go anywhere. My body is my spaceship. You know. Like, I don't, you know, that's subterranean, that's just lower dimensional things. Very, like, that doesn't make, that never made sense to me. Not, not just that, that the, the actual word uh, extraterrestrial, terrestrial meaning uh, Earth, of course. Yep. So, it's again, it's, it's just an extra 
coming from Earth, because uh, because the opposite of uh, uh, terrestrial is celestial. So why wouldn't we call them celestial? What we never call them extraterrestrials. We'd call them celestial beings, wouldn't we? But you hardly hear that anymore. It's more extraterrestrial, as in a terrestrial being from the land. It's it, it's from the Earth. Oh, good point. So. Uh, 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 the problem is when we say extraterrestrial, we all instantly think of ET, and we have to try and get out the Hollywood image of words out of our heads. Now I think that's that's the problem. Now I, I, I find myself doing the same thing all the time. So yeah, if that can help anyone, really good point. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, if if they've got physical bodies, that tells a lot, doesn't it? Because in the scriptures, in the scriptures, there have always been visitations by a angels. Um, for instance, Abraham was visited by angels, and he um, prepared a meal for the angels. And the scriptures tell us always be careful uh, in your actions because you never know that when you treat people, you could be um, you could be hosting angels. Um, so these type of beings. They, they don't come with the same purpose as these extraterrestrials do, that exchange technology just to a select elect few. They don't do that. Um, these, these visions are different. They, are they appear to be material, but they're not. It's, it's a transcendental vision that you are seeing, whereas, whereas clearly these extraterrestrials that they're talking about... Um, with NASA and all of that, those those are physical beings. They they they're not manifesting from on high. The higher beings are not allowed to interfere with us, and they don't, and they won't, and they never will. We'll never see them. We'll never see them participating in our activities like these subterranean, uh, evil, demonic creatures pretending to be nice are doing. Santos, can I ask for some clarification? Um, I'm getting into the Book of Enoch right now, and it's pretty fascinating. And they talk about you know the angels falling from heaven and um, at attaining wives and having giants and all of that. That whole storyline before the big flood comes. Is that um, what? What is that? Is that uh, just allegorical, or is that are these physical um, angels, or are these just what is this? It's, it's both, sister. It's absolutely both. It's allegorical because everyone, all of us are little Adam Kadmons, little Krishnas, and we, we have foregone our dwelling place on high because we thought we would be clever enough to um, mould matter. We thought that we could control matter and make worlds and participate in this material experiment, this uh, Mayan illusion. We, we we also um, did what the angels that fell from heaven did. We, we're all fallen. It's it's a fallen state. It doesn't mean that we are only fallen. We are we are still transcendently pure and 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 godlike and and um, wonderful uh, transcendental unconditioned beings. But here on this plane, this is an allegory teaching how we got here. And so in the allegory is real truth. Allegories teach truths that are sublime, but but in there is the kernel of physical truth, which is a mirror of, of the higher of the higher allegorical anagogical truths. And so the difference is between us and the demons is that we fell, we've repented, we are prodigal sons and we're returning, we are Elohim returning. Whereas the stars that fell from heaven the Nephilim, they don't repent. They're stuck here because they love evil. They just love their own bellies. They love their lies. They love manipulating others and feeding off their energies. We, on the other hand, we love to give energy to other people. Yeah. You know, you, you and I, we, we want to reciprocate good energy. Uh, uh, we want nothing more than to bless each other and so that you are rich and health, healthy yeah. and happy and knowledgeable and, and yeah. peaceful. And the more you are, the happier I am. Absolutely. Not them. If they see you sick and begging and paying taxes 
and miserable and, and pensioners paying utility bills that are exorbitant and not enough money to, to pay for the water and bread that they're, they're subsisting on. They love this. They love it. They think it's a game. Don't they feed on you in your weakened state, weakened spiritual state? Oh, yeah. What are we going to do about that? <laughs> We're going to vanquish them, sister, with we got, truth. Yeah. And stay strong. Spiritually. We're going to slay them. We're going to slay the demons. We've got nothing other to do than to slay demons. And how do we do it? With syncretism. Syncretism is the answer, not the trivium. All these Mayavadis saying, oh, you need the trivium so you can be logical and, <laughs> and, and, and you can be reasonable. Don't worry about your logical, reasonable, material, material dunce nature. Leave that behind. Go to the heart and, and, and allow the divine creator to speak through you and have the Holy Spirit of God rest on your heart. These people know not this. They don't understand it. They are purely mundane. So, Santos, in today's theme, when a lot of people talking these days, they use man as a negative connotation, like, oh, it was great till man got hold of it. You understand what I'm saying here? Oh, this was fantastic. Then man got their hands in there and they messed it all up. And, and it gives it, like, it, it gives us that we are always... No matter what we do, and uh, it's always got an evil connotation to it. You think that's again an ex? What what you would call an extraterrestrial? Uh, not coming from man. Uh, it's hard to explain. Is this something that's been introduced into our minds from uh, people other than man? Absolutely. To make man Absolutely. feel like the ass that you know, man's just an ass. Man ruins everything. Man destroys. Man does. It, this is what we hear these days. We never hear man is beautiful, man creates, you know, man gives birth, you know, and so on. Well, um, there are extenuating, mitigating factors as to all the trouble that and the stupidity of man. They're, sure, we, we do stupid stuff. <laughs> There's no doubt about that. But, but the elite, the demonic elite of this planet, they want us to believe that we are warmongering. They want us to believe that war is good for, for economy and profit and, and that we, we want to kill each other. We are tribal and, you know, we do. I go for Manchester United and you go for the Gunners, you know. You're an Arsenal supporter, right? And so, and, and we believe that we have these colours. Oh, I want the red colours. That's my football team, you know, and all of this. And... And one thinks he's a Jehovah's Witness and the other thinks he's a Mormon. There's none of that shit going on at all, at all, at all in the real world. This is yes. all buffoonery. And they want us to think that we are divided and conquered. They want us to think that there's the gays and there's the blacks and there's the shorts and the talls. And there's the, you know, everyone's divided and compartmentalized and all of that rubbish. They want us to believe that these are natural systems. They are not natural at all. Yeah. We are syncretic. What we are discussing now is our natural, natural way. This syncretism, astrology, and, and all of this beautiful science and understanding how to see true, you know, true science, this is, this is the true one. This is how we are. We are like this. We are so divine. All of that, all of that warmongering and, and lying, and, and they want us to think that we've We've got this instinct to keep up with the Joneses and that we are greedy and we hoard money in bank accounts and, and that we are materialistic and we want three-story houses and four cars and six SUVs and a boat and a tennis court, blah, 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 and the best career. And we want that, and that is all manufactured falsely. It's yeah, all artificial. Sold. It's sold to us. All. <laughs> yeah. And the flesh eating as well. Yeah, and the flesh eating is number one. Yeah. They're the ones that push that onto us in the beginning. It's not even that it's a natural urge or need. That was something that was indoctrinated by birth. That's not even a real human need. No, at all. it's not at all. At all. It's, it's used as an excuse for bad behavior, I find. Oh, everyone does that. It's, we've always done it. And that's what everyone uses as an excuse to get away with bad behavior, I find. Yeah, look, we're not perfect, but we're not what they no. say we are. We we can no. we can achieve and establish peace and goodwill on this planet easily tomorrow. Just all we got to do is just pull the demons out, get those 
Mark Dunces out of the way, the the disgraced Tysons, get them out of the way, these Dick Dawkins idiots, get them off there. We gotta we gotta spread the truth and get these morons off their soap boxes. They are doing harm to themselves, harm to everyone else, and harm to their creator, who they do not acknowledge. Not that, not that you can harm the creator. The, the creator will come and smash them to tiny bits very, very soon. They will be naught. They will be zero, zilch. They will be the perverted, swine-eating idiots that they always have been very soon. They'll be put in their place. In the meantime, just in the, meantime the discernment skills of some of the people that don't believe in what we're talking about needs to probably improve too. Yes, I guess it's multifaceted, right? I mean, well, that's that's our job. We all do it differently. I do it in a very aggressive manner, and probably it hurts people and offends people. But I don't care because I'm cruel to be kind. I'm not here for a, look at my personality. I'm the best truther. I don't give a shit about all that stuff. But I know that you guys are much softer, sweeter, and kinder, and we need to get it across in a loving, loving way. I'm do my motive is love. Okay, maybe I don't. <laughs> well, you're an Aries. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. I don't. I don't mind how aggressively I, I deliver it because I know that from the source, it's loving. I only do this because I love humanity and I hate demons and I hate falsity. So. I'm aggressive, yeah, sure, and a lot of people turn their videos off because they can't stand it. I don't care. They will always come back to the truth one day, and your job is to teach these very same things in your loving ways. Have a look at Summer, the way she teaches. It's just so sweet and kind. There's no aggressive there. It's just a good delivery. Well, we're all different. It can okay? be. So <laughs> Trust me, it can be. Yeah. Of course we can be, but in the main, in the main, we, 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 we have to be gentle with these people. They also have been deceived. We, we, we must be gentle and loving. We must um, understand like a small tree needs some support, right? If you take the support away, the little tree, the tree will lean over and it will grow crooked. Yeah. So you have to put a, a tree, you have to put a stick back up against the tree, tie it up, once you remove the false stake of falsity, pseudoscience, then you put a gently you put another pole or a stake near the tree and tie it up and tie it up in truth and the tree will grow strong, erect and direct, upright, and it will have good character, good fruit, and um, that we will be responsible. We're, we're the planters. We don't do the grow we don't grow. We water and we plant, as the Bible says. One sows, one plants, one waters, but God makes it grow. Don't try and make people grow. Right. Can't do it. You can only plant seeds, water those seeds, cultivate those seeds, and if they grow, they grow. If they don't, they were bad seeds. Not really a question. It's just um, there's the obvious polarity. And you talk about the your presentation, like the light and the dark, and how you can label that as evil and good. You know, you can do all these kind of labels. But you know, we talk about being between demons and um, uh, and living in the light and the truth. But you know, the creator created those demons. So it's like my thing is is like rather than and it's really hard to do this because it's, not, it's like this balancing act. But um, I can't hate them because that's hating the creator because the creator created them. But it, it but it's still against the creator. And so it's it's kind of like this. It can be like some mind screwery, if you want to say, um, because. We are doing this in the light and the truth, and trying to bring people out of their darkness and out of their chaos and out of their demonic behaviors and tendencies. But that I don't know. Maybe you can um, add on to this, Santos, because I'm, you know, this is always in my head because there is always a balance. It's like I try not to be like good against evil, but th it, that is how it is. I mean, it, we're in a duality and polarity, so. 
I also think yeah, that you, people might people might think because because again, you, 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 I don't think you're being harsh, Santos. I think you're just not. You, you know, it, it's like the the. Um, the, the mystic schools of the other time when you said people would come down, they come to the door, you know, they knock on that door and if they were, that people could see if they were ready or they weren't ready. But I see a lot, a lot of people come to your door, they knock on the door and go, Santos, you asshole, give me some fucking knowledge, you know what I mean? And I don't think you should treat those people with any respect whatsoever. Pardon my language too, by the way. <laughs> But you know what I mean. I don't think you. Should, I don't think you need to put up with uh, nonsense. These people are, are uh, a lot of the time wasting everyone's time when we're trying to get to the truth. Yeah, and I, yeah. I'd like to add also, Santos, that um, you lit a fire under my butt about four and a half years ago about vegetarianism or veganism, and I was just a blind. You know, I was just starting to wake up, and the way you were very enthusiastic, and you were just a. You know, you weren't putting up with any shit. It it clicked. It just snapped, and I have not eaten any flesh since. So That's I mean, exactly. it it worked. It really worked for me. Yeah, so. in those days, I was very very brutal against animals. Voice for the voiceless, and um, I know I hurt a lot of people, especially meat eaters, and I, I dumped hundreds of people off my Facebook and social media and everything like that. But you know how many thousands and Thousands of people have been writing to me since that and saying the best thing they ever did was stop eating dead corpses, yes. the bums of pigs and, and all of that swine shit. And now they are prospering in their health and they thank me for it and they thank the universe and the gods and they are so happy. So have I done a, a bad thing in hurting people's feelings? They <laughs> false oh, Santos said I'm a dog eater. Oh, boy, I'm going to cry now. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, yeah. you've got to, you you you've got to um, fight the fine fight. But as for Summer's question there about, um, uh, you know, like a, a good parent will hate the bad habits of their child. They will never hate their child. I don't hate anyone. I don't hate um, demon entities who want to repent. I hate their ignorance that they are teaching. I hate ignorance. My war is against ignorance, and 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 falsehood. There are three modes in nature, according to the Hare Krishnas, according to Bhagavad Gita. The mode of darkness, the mode of goodness, and the mode of passion. Three modes. We always do things under those modes. In the mode of passion, it's in the middle of goodness and darkness, or ignorance, I should say. Um, but those modes, we can transcend all of those modes by just serving the Lord. In other words, the source of our everything, whoever that is, whoever you want to call it, Buddha, Jehovah, Krishna, Christ, it really, in the end, it does not matter. These are names that cannot define and encompass in any way that oh. divine source, this beautiful being that shared with us this life that we had. And so service and surrender to that one, is the only way. And so even those modes, even the mode of goodness is still karma. We don't want to, we want to transcend karma. And the only way to do that is by chanting the holy names of God and serving God. Whatever you make that to be, it's the source. It's the root cause of all causes, the supreme personality of Godhead. It is a person, it's not an impersonal force. As all the Mayavadis and all the Trivium people will tell you and, and all these new age gurus who are half, they're mostly just drunks and they've got nothing better to do and no other way of making money because they're too lazy and sloppy and so they go out on the, on the road touring and being you know, new age teachers and people flock to them just to be deceived more and more and more and they're teaching prosperity consciousness and you know, attract this into your life and attract that. You don't need all that shit. You, all you need to do is serve truth with your heart. You can't do it with your mind. You can, but it's you've got to do it with, with your heart. Just bow down to truth. Serve the one, the good, and the beautiful, as the Neoplatonists called God. The one, the good, and the beautiful. Everything is beautiful from that one. Nothing is ugly. It's all beautiful. And, and that one has a personality, qualities, goodness, knowledge, wisdom, love, virtue, power, strength, justice, 
and we are the receptacles of all of those principles. Our body is the receptacle, the receptacle of all the universal principles. Not one is missing in us. The only thing is that we haven't activated them all. Some have more love than they think they have, and they haven't bothered to develop that love. Look around you. Is there someone who needs love? Don't judge them. Leonardo da Vinci said, don't treat anyone kind because you, unkind because you do not know what they are going through. You can't say a bad word to people. Love them. Look around and see if there's family members who need that extra love. You know, um, instead of just being whimsical and and flippant at times with your loved ones, stop and and just ask them, "How are you? How are you really? I love you. Can I help you in any way?" You know, and just pause and and let the the glue of the universe come between you and all other beings and show them love. Love really, truly is the one of the most divine qualities. Um, no less than truth, no less than beauty. These are the holy trinity, love, beauty and goodness. And we are endowed with this. We are blessed with this. But to the capacity of how much we develop these things. Remember Jesus, he said uh, the, the king had three slaves and he gave one, one denarii, another one two and another one five and he went away and then he said, I'll come back and then I want to see this money when I come back. And the, the, the two slaves, they were good for nothing and they buried their money because the master was exacting and just and so they thought, well, we're not going to lose this money, we'll just bury it. Whereas the, the good slave, he put his money in the banks and he made double the amount. Well, we've been given talents. That's what the talent means. We've been given gifts. We've been given precious gems in our souls and they're, they're so, um germs that have not germinated yet and the more we cultivate these the more we bring back when we go into the heavens that's why Jesus says do not store your treasures on earth where moth and rust consume and where thieves come in and steal store them in the heavens where there is no moth no rust yeah thank you for that And that's what we're doing. We are storing stuff in our heavenly parts right now. We are learning the science, transcendental science of astrology. I just, I'm going to probably vamp this up to two shows a week, and I'm just going to do um, astrology on on steroids. And we're going to go through the charts of famous people, and we're going to show how the planets have affected them. We're going to we're going to learn how to read charts. We're going to we're going to just all I need is the help. Please, all I'm asking, help me, and I will help you. If I can have, if I can have people around me um, doing shows like this, um, um, Summer's looking after this one. Hakan's looking after lots of stuff. Eden's pretty busy there in the chat rooms and 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 helping out. If we work out a way to to, to get this show on the road in a big way, get these shows out there, out there, out there where people can learn the true science instead of despising the true sciences and going after pseudo gravity, globe, big bang, evolution, relativity, Hegelian dialectic, uh, buffoonery, we've got a chance. We've got a big chance. More than a chance. Hakeem and Eden are just like, yeah, let's pick some twine out. <laughs> Let's kick some butt and kick some demon butt. We're demon slayers, guys. And we do that through our beauty. We are too beautiful to be subjected to them. We are so beautiful, all of us. Individually, united. We can make a good front. We can stand together in truth, true science only, transcendental, true science, none of this crappy hocus-pocus stuff. And... Um, we can make a go of it and we can enlighten our brothers and help them. Many people, look, I've got people who two months ago abused me so severely they wanted to murder me for um, uh, going geocentric and they've come back and they've said, you know what, Santos, I'm so sorry, I'm very, very, very sorry. Please forgive me. I sent you this nasty email. I told you to go to hell. I want to kill you. I called you a dog. I called you this and called you that. Please forgive me. I now see that we live on a disc plane, there's no globe, it's hocus pocus, and they're waking up. 
Yeah. And I'm getting this by the hundreds, guys. I'm getting it by the hundreds. I got thousands and thousands of people that wanted to kill me, murder me, tell me I was a dog, and all kinds of attacks. You got no idea what I'm coping with behind the scenes with all the messages that I get and all the naysayers and killers and and like the Christians who went to the Americas and killed the indigenous people because they didn't believe in their Jesus, you know, um, and like the all of them, they're all guilty, Islamists are guilty of it, Jews are guilty of murdering, they're all murderers because they're all materialists, they're not spiritualists. They see their books as material wisdom. So when the Quran says, go and kill infidels, well they go and kill infidels. And when Christians and Jews say, Jehovah saying, kill the Canaanite women, dash their children against the, pr the crag, rape them, murder them, they're useless. They physically go and do it. So you've got these Zionists in Israel saying, we are God's people and you are dogs and swine and goy and we were meant to rule the earth. Well, this is, this is again, this is demonic worship and they've been misled by the material, literal renderings of their scriptures. They know not how to see the literary, anagogic part of their scriptures because they are too stupid. They are meat-eating and the animal mentality prohibits them from seeing with their eyes. Their pineal gland is polluted. When the blood is polluted and you've got animal blood in your body, you're gone. There's no hope. There's no ascending. There's no ascending. I have to be clear to all people, even ones who are still dabbling in a little bit of meat eating because they believe they need their protein and their iron and all that bullshit. All of those people need to wake up real quick. You're eating animals. You are, as the Bhagavad Gita says, you are a dog eater and you have no place in the higher realms. You will come back as a dog and be eaten by dogs, period. No hope. No hope. You need to get rid of the animals. You need seven years of cleansing from animal um, necrophiliac uh, corpses in your body. It's necrophilia. Does that include fish also? Oh, absolutely. All animals. That's an animal. Yeah. What did you say? I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. It's an animal. All animals. Yep, fish are animals. Um, what's, what, what, are, what is your name? Hibernia? Yeah, yeah. Actually, my name is Alan. Alan, but it's Hibernia is just the, you know, title. So, yeah. You said Seth, Alan? No, just Alan. No, no, no. You said something that you were saying um, that was, I don't know. Never mind. <laughs> oh, that's okay. He, he was asking about fish, Summer. He, he oh, asked if fish was okay. I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> only, because it's in the, only because it's in the Bible, you know, the fish story and, you know, blah, blah, blah. Anything yes, you have. You know, you must, you must understand, though, that um, this fish eating is, is it's all allegoric. Everything in the, in the scriptures is literary. The history, the literal historical part of it, it didn't happen. It's all transcendental. Let me show you. Here's one of the best Hare Krishna books you will ever read, Jaiva Dharma. This was a gift to me from Sulabha, my Hare Krishna friend, and... Um, and I knew the moment I started reading this book that I was on something great, just something great. But this is how they explain the difference, what I'm trying to explain to you about historical mundane as opposed to... So you've got historical mundane temporal conditioned history, which doesn't exist, and you've got transcendental spiritual unconditioned true history, which is what's in our scriptures. So he says here, talking about Krishna coming to earth and reincarnating. And it says, Sri Krishna takes birth, performs activities, and gives up his body. So how can his form be eternal? Lahiri Masahaya asked. So he's asking Babaji, tell me, how does Krishna, how does Krishna come to the earth if he's God and he reincarnates? It's ridiculous. So is he God or is he not? Or is he reincarnate? So how did Jesus get here? You know, he's walking around on the earth. Isn't Jesus God forever in the heavens? And, and he is. 
And, and so what's he doing as a, as, a, as a bloke here walking around on the earth and doing these uh, material things? Well, he goes on to say, Sri Krishna's form is Sat Chit Ananda, ever existing, full of knowledge and completely blissful, Babaji replied. His birth, activities and giving up of the body have no connection with mundane matter. When, um, then why have such descriptions been given in the Mahabharata and other scriptures? Babaji answered, the eternal truth defies description, for it is beyond words. The pure soul, in his spiritual aspect, sees the transcendental form and pastimes of Sri Krishna, Christ, Jesus, put anyone you want in there, Buddha, any of these incarnated saviors. Um, when he describes that supreme reality through words, it appears just like worldly mundane history. Those who are capable of extracting the essence from the scriptures like Mahabharat experience Krishna's pastimes in a specific way. However, when people of mundane intelligence hear these descriptions, they interpret them in different ways. When one meditates on the form of Sri Krishna, the conception which arises in the heart is limited by time and space. Lahiri Mahasaya said, how can one transcend such limitations and meditate on Krishna's actual form? And then he goes on to explain. That's on page 62. So basically what Babaji taught was that there's a mundane rendering in words. Words have a mundane aspect to them because they're here in the world. And words cannot transcend thoughts and descriptions and anagogic renderings of their own. What is required is for you and I to be spiritual and transcendental in our minds. So we have to be self-realized and then we understand the true history, that it's not mundane history. Interpret the allegory or metaphor or whatever, right? According to your level. As you are, so you will interpret. Yeah. If your mentality is the grossest mundane type of mentality, then you're going to have a Jesus boy man saviour who came down here and and he actually went to the toilet and burped and farted and sneezed and yawned and 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 did all of these scratching his bum and and everything like picking his nose and if that's what you want God to do, that's fine because that's your mentality. But my mentality has risen above all that. Santa Claus ain't Santa Claus for me. Santa right. Claus is spiritual. It's in here, and I know Jesus, and I know Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior in my heart eternally, never in history. Never, not for me. It'll be, it will be for the mundane dudes out there who can't handle it, <laughs> but not for me. I'm saved. I'm gone. I'm, I'm out of, I'm out of this fixation with material lust and material um, pastimes. I'm done. I've done enough of it. I'm 52 now, and I'm just done. I've done enough. I was, I was a teenager, and I was a fool, and I did all that, and I chased up every kind of, you know, um, pleasure, pleasureful pleasurable uh, activity and, uh, you know, sense of gratification means nothing anymore. Yeah. It doesn't mean anything. Yeah, the books, the Emerald Tablet, the Torah, the Quran, the Bible, all be translated from consciousness. I mean, you can, like you said, read it as, like, the lowest level and the literal, you know, version or um, there it can be interpreted on many different levels of consciousness. And actually the intro into the Emerald Tablet of Oath was saying you can um, read or listen to these um, tablets a hundred different times and you're going to get something different from each different time because of the power and the just the power in them and I have. I've experienced it. I've only like, listened to them like maybe ten times but every time it's like yeah, because because it's 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 a living book. The Bible itself tells you the Word of God is alive and exerts power and can discern between spirit and soul. The letter of the Word killeth, 
but the spirit of the word vivifies. So what do you want? The letter of the word which kills? Oh, I want my Jesus, baby Jesus in the crib. Oh, he's so cute, that literal Jesus in the manger with all the animals. And I want my man Jesus saviour who had a beard and was Jewish looking. Oh, that's a nice Jesus Messiah. That's all a crock. That's, it's non-existent. Non-existent. There's only one Jesus and that Jesus is the one, not two. Can't be divided from the heaven, between the heavens and the earth. There can't be two Jesus. There can't be an historical one and one in your hearts. That's stupidity. And yet, Christians, so-called churchgoers, they opt for the historical one and exclude the one in their hearts and never get to know the one in their hearts because they're waiting for the historical one to come back, who didn't come, never will come back, and that's their Jesus. Morals. I'm sure we all deal still with the aspect of having people who under no circumstances do want to listen who point out antagonism against you or against us while we try to give them actually valuable knowledge. Would you recommend to just kiss them on the forehead and put them back to bed or um, what is your recommendation? Well, depends what mood you're in. Um, sometimes I just walk away when I'm in a good mood. But yeah. when I'm in a demon slaying mood, I give it to them. I torment them. And I give it to them and I tell them how it really is. Depends. Um, sometimes you can do more harm than good, though, because um, it's none of your business to have to save them or make them grow. You're just plant, planting seeds, really. We're just seed, plants, seed planters. And so it depends on their intelligence. Sometimes you see a spark of intelligence there and you think, I think it's worth saving this guy, you know. Or this woman, and um, but other times you just see that dopey, you know, like, whoa, <laughs> oh God, that's that's about as dumb as a, a rodent or something like that. How did they ever incarnate into a human form? I don't know. Run for your life, because <laughs> you'll just pollute your own. You you pollute your soul. It'll it'll dirty. It'll their filthy, stupid, ignorant attitude will make you dirty. Don't give your pearls to swine, man. Yes. Well, the funny thing is, what, with that, like they will just come at you with their demons, and it'll entice you because you just you're just so in awe at the stupidity, at the ignorance, at the evilness, and you just want to like, you just want to jump on it and like, oh my god, I can't believe this! But and then it's like, holy crap, this is just a trap. This is an energy trap, absolutely. So yeah, being able to discern. For yourself, you know. Summer, yep. Tom, another question. You might want to address it. Yeah, Tom. Okay, so Santos. Uh, this is from Tom. What about the star Alcyon being mentioned in the Bible several times in, in a book called a uh, series by Richmond M. Temple? The author says that the star series has a very high love energy. Hmm. Oh yeah, Sirius is the mother of our son Jesus. Our son is Jesus, and its mother is Sirius. How do I know? Okay, it's easy. Jesus is called Jesus as Jesus of Nazareth, is he not? Yeah. There it is, Nasir. In Arabic, that means Jesus of Osiris or of Sirius. So Jesus, our son, is Jesus of Nazareth, Jesus Nasir, Nasirius. And so she is a she is a glorious star who's probably, I, I still think it has something to do with our binary system. There must be a binary system. Our vortex sun is vortexing on the flat plane Earth with another star we can't see or it's Sirius or and why do I say that well simple because Sirius is always up there at the Tropic of Cancer at the top and when the Sun is in at Capricorn at the bottom of this TP like ramp like Christmas tree like um, ramp this the top is Cancer and the bottom down here where my elbows are 
that's where Capricorn is, and that's the that's the mountain Mount Sinai that the sun does every year. It's a vortex, so it compresses as it goes up to Cancer, and then it expands on the way down as it goes to Capricorn, and it's doing this every year. But on the top of the Christmas tree, there's always a five-pointed star. That's serious. And so when we celebrate Jesus' birthday on the 25th of December down here in Capricorn, he's got to get back to his mummy. And when he goes up to Cancer on July the 4th, that's what July the 4th is all about, Independence Day, that is Cancer. That is Cancer. And nations are born and independent on that day because Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is in conjunction with his mother Mary, Sirius, Isis Mary, Sirius, the star, in Cancer at that time. And they are both together. And they together usher in the dog days of, of July, August. And because their heat combined is, is of such a kind that it, um, it burns and it, it's because they are conjugating. Conjugal. What's what's an astrological conjugation? Well, it's when a planet conjunct. Yeah, it's conjunct. Well, what's conjugation? Well, that's when a man and a woman conjugate. They're making love, yeah. Oh. Conjugal relations, ships conjugate to conjoin. When you conjugate verbs, you conjoin the endings and make different kinds of verbs. So they are conjoined conjugally. And so this happens year in, year out. Jesus Christ, he climbs up that mountain and he goes up to make love with his wife and bride, Mary Magdalene, or mother, or whatever you want to call it. So it doesn't matter because Iris, Osiris, Isis, and Horus, or Krishna, Balaram, and Radharani, they are always one. Yeah. And so they are making love with their electrical electrical internal energies. Krishna and Radharani are always making love. We will be we will be imitating them when we go to Vrindavan because we will be individuals and there will be individuals there and all that will be going on is sweet opulent pastimes where we will be just singing, making music, making love eating and drinking spiritually, not physically, none of this physical lustful love, none of this physical gross music or food, it's spiritual. We will have spiritual form, not physical form, spiritual form. And we will be doing this eternally, unconditionally. And every moment of our life, our bliss will grow exponentially. Not just a little bit every day, exponentially our bliss will grow and grow and never stop growing never never ever and that's how good it's going to be and you think Krishna and Radharani are not leading the way they are basically just sexual eternal partners forever why do you think they gave us such a beautiful gift of sex for it to, to be so pleasant no one hates sex do they Anyone put your hand up if you reckon it's horrible. Put your hand up if you hate music. Put your hand up if you think food does just not taste good. Put your hand up if you don't like meeting beautiful people. It's all it's all pleasing because that's what Krishna means. Krishna means the all attractive pleasing one. And that's why you have Krishna in you because you have charisma. Don't you have charisma? I've got charisma. Krishna same word. We imitate the Lord. All right, guys, I reckon we can wind it up if you're um, happy. Yeah, Santos, can I ask you, um, I came in a little late, but the, the books that you recommend, um, of course, you said three in particular for a transcendental mystic attainment. Um, is this something you have written down somewhere or... Can I um, put a list together for you? I would love to to get not just those three, but all the books that you would recommend. Okay. I've got an email here already ready with my 50, um, 30 top books. Oh, great. I'll put it in the chat now. Oh, beautiful. Thank you. Very good. And on my website, universaltruthschool.com, I have a recommended reading um, list there. Okay, very good. Before um, we go, I actually wanted to address something that was in Marinism's video back in 
that the Mars landing is actually somewhere in Iceland and he proved it through the of Earth. But before he started the video, he was kind of mocking certain people and um, one of those people was Giordano Bruno. And I was like, oh no, no. I was really yeah. confused. So maybe maybe he was um, uh, misinformed or what? But it was, it was very concerned about that. I just put that list in there, guys. I didn't hear you, so I must shame your um, internet connection's really weak. You, you've been breaking up badly today. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, um, something's really wrong your end. Okay. Say that again. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Kind of. Okay. Um, yeah. I guess it's my phone, but um, what I was saying is that Jaronism posted a video a few months ago uh, exposing the Mars landing, and uh, before he started the video, he was mocking the people who brought us gravity and relativity, and one of those people that he mocked was Neo Don Bruno, and I was just really confused by it. Um, I knew he probably just didn't get like the right information, but he he mocked him, and I was like, I need to talk to Sanchez about that one. Yeah, yeah. This this is the sort of stuff I want to correct. Um, uh, a lot of these guys. Uh, I did do a show with Jeronism, and he's a wonderful um, uh, researcher. I, I love I love them all, but all of them, all of them. They've all got little bits that need to be corrected, and one of these is they continually, continually repeat like parrots without doing their own research. Um, you know, repeat things like Plato and Pythagoras were ballers. They were not ballers, and you've got to remember, even if you can find some information that suggests they were, history has been co-opted, guys. The Jesuits have yep. been rewriting Plato's books to deceive us. And Pythagoras. Pythagoras didn't write anything. So how can someone write that he spoke about a globe? Period. Because he did not write anything. All we have is people like Ovid and all of these other guys who quoted other books that were extant at the time. And um, now we don't have anything from Plato. So um, I'm correcting this. It was Aristotle and all the morons of the material, materialistic trivium type mindset that come from the mundane worldly, animalistic, brained pseudoscientists that teach that rubbish. But all your Neoplatonists, rest assured, um, I'll give you some example of some of the Neoplatonists right now. Um, let me go into a, a site that I uh, was reading just the other day. I'll put that in this site. I'm going to put in the chat room. Um, and it has to do with some of the great guys from antiquity who um, rubbished the, the globe. And all through history, there've been, there's been this war. Because since the Iron Age came, we have Iron Age idiots who have forgotten divinity who want to preach pseudoscience through demon worship. The demons have always had their pet. Number one demonic teaching was the globe. Because the globe makes everything relative. Oh, we're upside down. I'm upside down here and you guys are upright. Or you're, probably some of you are like this. Others are like that. Others are upside down totally like me. So I'm upside down here, right? It's hocus pocus. It's demonic stupidity. And people believe it because they paid a lot of money in, in, in their tertiary education to, <laughs> to learn this shit. <laughs> so they're repeating it and they're going to stab you in the face if, if you offend how much money they paid for nothing to be deceived. But um, here we have the likes of, let's have a look at some of the guys mentioned here. We've got Cyril of, hang on, uh, Lactantius of the, the third century. He's one of the greats. He says, um, says here, in, it is certain that several Christian writers explicitly argued against the spherical earth. Lactantius calls it folly because people on a sphere would fall down. Saint Cyril of Jerusalem, third century, fourth century, saw earth as a firmament floating on water. Saint John Chrysostom, 
is, is a famous one of the 5th century. Saw a spherical earth as contradictory to scripture. Severian, Bishop of Gabala and Diodorus of Tarsus argued for a flat earth. And Cosmos, hang on, Cosmos? Well, looky what I've got here. I've got the very book I'm speaking about, Cosmos. And I bought this book um, on the 12th of the 7th, 2010. I always mark the date when I buy my books. So six years ago, here's little old me. I bought this book, Christian Topography, Flat Earth, where he shows clearly the flat earth that looks like the tabernacle of Moses and gives a lot of evidence to suggest that it's a flat plane. This is the 6th century. I bought this so I could rubbish Christians and to show how stupid they are because now we, we, you know, we've got CGI um, cartoons of, of the earth and it's the sphere. Well, now I'm actually using this book and the things therein to show how right they were and the Catholic Church was right for 1,500 years before the idiots, Galileo Galilei, Kepler and all these morons, um, Jesuit PSYOP, um, changed all that. And so these guys, they knew their stuff. I mean, there's also here, um, there's also the great um, Augustine of Hippo, one of the church fathers who argued for a flat earth. So Diodorus of Tarsus, Tarsus argued for a flat earth and Cosmos Indo, Indo Plostis called Earth a parallelogram. There you go. Stick that in your Google search. Parallelogram. That's what. That's how he described the Earth, flat and surrounded by four seas. In his Christian topography, it's Christian. The Christians know the Earth is flat. They have cognitive dissonance now when they go to church and see a stupid ball. There are relatively few historical records of the period between 600 and 1,000 for either spherical or flat earth thinking. Saint Basil argued, this is the 4th century again, argued that knowledge about earth's shape was irrelevant. Well, there you go. See, so you've got these fence sitters who, oh, it doesn't matter, does it? It doesn't matter, you know. Why would you want to know where you live? Well, these are idiots who don't know anything about anything diddly squat, diddly squat anyway, and so they're as dumb as a donkey. So why would you follow them? And then why would you follow the other morons who accept demonic pseudoscience when we've got all these beautiful men and women from antiquity? Look at St. Augustine. He says he argued against antipodes, which means podes means feet and anti means people living on the other side of, the, of a sphere where, where their feet are upside down to your feet. So it's called antipodes, antipodes. And so he argued against that and called it a fable. And, and, and he also explicitly pointed out that the belief in a spherical earth did not directly imply a belief in antipodes. And this is what he said. Those who affirm a belief in antipodes do not claim to possess any actual information. Guys, this is Augustine. I don't know whether you've, you've Saint Augustine. Please pay attention, man. This is Saint Augustine, the number one church father. Jerome and Augustine and Eusebius. Those three are like the trinity gods of Christian history. But Saint Augustine is the mother of all. I mean... Every Pope, every Catholic has ever had St. Augustine on their lips. He's the number one. Number one. And he says, They merely conjecture that since the earth is suspended within the concavity of the heavens and there is as much room on the one side of it as on the other, therefore the part which is bereft cannot be void of human inhabitants. They fail to notice that even should it be believed or demonstrated that the world is round or spherical in form, it does not follow that the part of the earth opposite to us is not completely covered with water, or that any conjectured dry land there should be inhabited by men. For scripture, which confirms the truth of its historical statements by the accomplishment of its prophecies, teaches not falsehood. Hear, hear. And it is too absurd to say that some men might all have set sail from this side and travelled the immense expanse of ocean, have propagated there a race of human beings descended from that first man. 
So basically, he's just saying it's 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 you know there's there's no actual factual basis for these buffoon um, teachings and ideologies and concepts and 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 theories. They're all theories. Relativity's a theory. Gravity's a theory. The globe's a theory. Evolution's a theory. The Hegelian dialectic is a theory. The Big Bang is a theory. Let us dispense with these stupid, idiotic, moronic, devil-worshipping, demonic theories and let us be imbued in transcendental truth. It's right here. I've been sharing it. So look at all these books. Look, it's all here. These are Neoplatonists. These are our these are our God teachers. We can't fail. We've got the truth. There's no globe, there's no relativity, there's no gravity. And I rest my case with Tesla. Tesla said Einstein was a monkey man, which he was, and he, he, he thought his relativity was something to flush down the toilet. So pathetic. And he did not think anything of gravity. He thought that was a ridiculous, nonsensical, idiotic stupidity. And he explained that everything is grace of magnetism and electricity. The Coriolis effect, the tides, tornadoes, Every effect you see is an effect of magnetic wisdom. Magnetism is God. It is a conscious being, omniscient, omnipresent. There's nowhere in the universe where there's not magnetism. It's all magnetic. There's no gravity. It's hocus pocus. And we've got to slay these demons, guys. Let's get on. Let's get on with it. Brace yourself with the helmet of salvation. The, the uh, breastplate of righteousness, have your feet shod with, with you know, diligence. We, we've got to put our, uh, our armor on, as it says in Ephesians. Dress yourself with the, the, um, the armor of, of God to defend the truth because we have a war and it's a spiritual war with the demons in the invisible air of our plane. Mm -hmm. It's a war. No time for resting. These people will defend those theories until they die. Like, I'm dealing with it right now on my Twitter because B.O.B. retweeted me and oh my God at the crap that I have been getting in these past 24 hours. It's like, no, it's, it, they call it a scientific, or it's a theory because it's, it, it's fact. I was like, then they would call it scientific fact. <laughs> like, what are you saying right now? Yeah, disgrace, disgrace, Tyson and um, Dick Dork, and all of these morons. They will be disgraced by our um, by our efforts, guys. Uh, don't don't worry about the the naysayers who send uh, nasty emails, and we'll get the last laugh. We have the last laugh. We're already laughing. I'm laughing at them. I laugh at them, even though I treat them brutally. I'm I'm warning I'm warning anyone who wants to send me a nasty email. You send me a nasty email comes back with interest, pressed, shaken, and overflowing. I'm Calabrian, I'm Aryan, and I'm not a nice guy. You're going to cop it, and you're going to probably want to commit suicide after I deal with you if you try to debunk or belittle truth. I'm not having it. And so... I, I, I feel sorry for all the poor beings that have written to me because I reply with interest. Don't you do it because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to suffer the consequences of my behavior. And I know it's not nice what I do to people, but I tell them in no uncertain circumstances they will never, ever try to write back to me and try to belittle truth. Not to me. They'll do it to some other dickhead, some other unconscious moron, mm -hmm. but not me. That's why we love you, Arian. Yeah, thanks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Don't need to copy me, guys. I'm doing what I'm doing. You do what you do. Yeah. We all have our own, own way. Yeah, we all have our own way. And I, if I've done wrong, I'll, I will bear it all. I will bear it all. If I've done right, I'll be rewarded. I don't care. The universe knows that my fight is the fight against ignorance. And how they, the universe knows how much I love truth. I always have, ever since I was a little boy. I've had, I've been in fights when I was at school, uh, as a Jehovah's Witness, trying to sort out the unbelievers. I've always, even at the doors, I've been, I've been punched, I've been hit, I've been kicked. 
at, I've been spat at, I've had water thrown on me, I've had everything when I was a Jehovah's Witness. I've been doing this all my life. I don't stop. I hate demons. Simple. Yeah. So, um, Santos, you mentioned earlier that you wanted to start doing this twice a week. Did you want to have two separate things, one with summer and another one, or a continuation? Um, I don't know. I'll have a think about it. But if anyone there now, right now, listening, can help me, um, I'd like to launch it from my YouTube channel because I've got 50,000 um, subscribers there and I yeah. want to do this style with Google Hangout or, yeah. or whatever, however. If anyone knows how I can do this, how we can get this message out more, yeah. get, on, uh, get on Skype to me, please, please, yeah. offer your assistance. Yeah, I've... Um, Any, I've I tried to walk you through that one thing, but um, we can we we'll talk about it for sure because um, it's just really simple to set up. It really is. So um, if you want to host it on yours, you know you have more people following you. So but whatever no. you know, we'll figure it out. Yeah, and and I think I want to do I want to do a um a Monday one. It'll be my Monday, and most of you guys it'll be a Sunday, I guess. But uh. Around about the same time on a Monday, maybe a different time. Maybe we could do a, an evening for me so I can get the Europeans. So I might cater for the Europeans on the other one, and this one will keep it here for the uh, Americans because it suits the Americans. It's a nice evening time for them, but the Europeans, it's about four in the morning. So mm -hmm. I'll do a second one, and um, on that second one, I think I might just deal with um, how to read the chart and we're just going to do. We're just going to learn the science of astrology. Whereas this one, I'll keep it um, to cosmology, syncretism, uh, geocentrism, and all of that. Whereas the other one, I want to devote just to astrology. So anyone listening that can help, please, please help me. Yeah. I just need help. I'd be doing this 24 hours a day with the right help. And and and. I'm only scratching the surface. There's so much here. There's so much to share. Yeah, we'll definitely. And another another thing I need is I need people to get on Twitter, post my vids, get on my. I haven't visited my fan page, uh, Facebook fan page, which has twenty thousand members. I haven't visited it since I opened it, or since someone opened it for me. I don't even know what it looks like. I don't go in there. I don't have the time. <laughs> And I need someone to get on there, bang, 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 post all my videos. Someone to, to help me with Zoo, Face Uni. I just just put your hand up, guys, please, please. You'll, you'll do the world a favor because I've got the goods. I've got the information. If yeah. you've got the technical, te technical know-how and the will and the time, help me to help the world. Yeah, I'm more than happy to help. I believe yeah. school was a great idea, too. This will grow big time. It I will. think there's an element of helplessness you feel when you are awake and you feel like you've got all this information and there's nothing you can really do with it. So it's really an empowering thing to think that you can actually get in there and make a difference. So I'm uh, totally open to helping. Yeah. Please, please. Look, I've got, um, as I mentioned on the Greg, uh, Greg Carlwood show, show back in uh, June uh, last year when I was about to release my 22 PowerPoint presentations, I announced there that I was going to do that in August and of course uh, I got taken away and put in a cage for seven yeah. weeks. So that set, that set me back about six months but I didn't lose my information, not all of it. And those presentations, I'm very lucky that I saved them and um, well, Here's, here's some of the uh, titles of those presentations. Have a look at this. I mean, again, if I had some help, I would release them now, all of them. Every day I would release one. This, these, are the, um, these are the titles. Have a look at this, right? Uh, where are we? Okay. The Holy Days, all of the key holidays of significance along the ecliptic. The Lamb of God. The universe is a lamp, lamb. The sun, S-O-N slash S-U-N in history. Ascension and the chrism. Astrology, the word of God. The holy science. Electricity, God. The age of Aquarius. Glastonbury zodiac and syncretism. Nursery rhymes, fairy tales and syncretism. The kingdom of heaven. 
The King and the Priest, Sovereignty and Spirituality. That's one that is particularly dealing with sovereignty and law. The seven congregations that are in Asia, Shiva and Jehovah, the Last Supper. I go through and, and, and go through all the details of Leonardo da Vinci's Last Supper, showing it to be astrological. Astrology body types, the science or art of gospel writing, life and the golden section, the Fibonacci section or um, rhythm, whatever. The astrological chart of Sri Rama, the syncretism of duality in unity, the 12 tribes of Israel. Now, how would you like to get that on your, on your desktop? Yeah. That, those, are, those are presentations fully ready to be. So I've got astrology to teach. I've got those 22 presentations to release. I've got, it's just coming out of my ears, man. It gives me a headache sometimes. I just need help. I, I will invite people to come and stay here for weeks on end, but they have to, they have to be on the case. You know, and on the computer, I've got good internet um, service, and we have to get stuff out. Help, you know, in syncretism, making websites. I need tech people with technology, not people who just want to come around and just pretend to help, but people who can help. Mm -hmm. People who can help me, um, you know, set up my uh, all of my social media so that it's linked up, so that I maximise hits. People that can help me make my YouTube channel better. No one's doing any of that. I'm not because I, I don't know how to do it. So I've just got stuff just you know, working on you know, two or three pistons. Mm -hmm. It's frustrating. Yeah. I'm going to stop the broadcast right now. We're going to continue to talk about this, but I'm going to stop it just for right now. So, yeah. Thank okay. you. Yeah, no problem.